Hello, this is Angel Clayorder from Art to Ride Associate Trainers, and I'm here with my 16-year-old Hanoverian thoroughbred mare Lizzie. This video was taken in the fall, in the, I mean, in the, I mean, sorry, in the summer of 2016. Um, I had gotten her about two years ago from a breeder here in Southern California. She had bred her to be a brood mare, but she never carried or had a foal. And so she was left out in pasture for about 14 years of her life. And so when I got her, she knew very little and was quite set in her ways and was unsure of, of what work really meant. And um, I think that made her a little bit nervous about work. And it carried over for quite a long time. And just recently have I been able to get her to calm down. Um, but there was a huge change versus when I first got her to now because she used to pace and wouldn't eat a lot and she was quite underweight when I first got her and now after treating ulcers and and really asking her a lot to relax in her work she became le much less stressed eats a lot more it has a very calm look on her face um, in the stall now and it's just an overall has a much more happier expression. So as you can see here, she doesn't have a lot of muscle, very little muscle on her top line. She's making kind of short, choppy steps with her hind legs. Her belly is distended. She can't really seem to bend that well or move through with her hind end. It's kind of left out behind. And the reason for that is one, she doesn't have very much muscle, and two, when the horse is not relaxed and the back is hollow, it's physically impossible for them to step underneath themselves because their whole hind end is tight and almost locked up. So that's why it's so important to get the horse to relax is because when they free up their spine and, and the muscles from being tense in their back, they can step underneath themselves and we can get that push and impulsion and the lateral movement that will ask them to lift their back and to be able to support us as the rider. So in the beginning of this video, she was a little bit more nervous, and she is a lot, is still quite nervous going into the trot transition here. But it changes a lot from the summer of 2016 to the fall of 2016, which I will show here in just a second when this short clip is over. But she starts to get a little bit more relaxation towards the end of this video, but I don't show it. And then this is the fall of 2016, and as you can see, there's a lot, uh, there's quite a, a, di a big difference from the summer to the fall. She looks a little bit more muscular, has a lot more weight on her. She's a lot calmer, not as wild or nervous or stressed out and this is after she was put on ulcer medication and she got that kind of cleaned out and she has a much deeper stretch here as well and her the steps with her hind end don't look as short or choppy or tense anymore they seem to be slower and deeper especially when she stretches all the way down to the ground and completely opens up her spine can she then step all the way underneath herself and get that impulsion and the lift up through her back. She also used to be a lot more reactive to the whip if you might have seen in the previous clip but now I can use the whip a little bit more and ask her to step underneath herself and get a little bit of that more lateral movement on the circle to get her to lift her back a little bit more. And there was more walk in a in that I ha I had done a little bit more walk before this, but it didn't get recorded. And as you can see, when she went up into the trot there, she tried to run a little bit, um, so with that nervous nature kind of coming through and old habits. And so I just put her on a smaller circle, just to slow her trot down a little bit. And then when it slowed down, I let her out a little bit more. But as you can see, as compared to the first video, she's not running around with her head up in the air and completely hollow. She kind of she's in she no longer needed the sham bone anymore as well. She's able to kind of keep her head below her withers a lot more. But I'm still looking for that really deep 
stretch for her because it really helps to open up her entire top line and to get her to really swing through and free up her shoulders. And most of the time I do lunge work before I ride her. Sometimes I will do work in hand. It just depends on the day. When I first started lunging her, she would run around on the end of the lunge line and she would get super fit. So it would take longer and longer and longer for her to settle into the zone each and every time. It almost seemed to make her more and more nervous. So those days when I just do work in hand before I get on are very beneficial instead of lunging her to prevent her from getting overly fit. But the lunging is definitely a lot more beneficial now that she's much more relaxed because she doesn't run around on the end of the lunge line hollow and she's actually being a little bit productive by seeking the stretch and going around a lot calmer. And so here, she's a she has a little bit of a harder time bending to the left. Um, so I'm using the whip to try to move the hind, out, the hind end out a little bit more and squeezing and releasing with the inside, with the lunge line to ask her nose to come in a little bit to create that bend. And that will also help her to stretch down more because the lateral movement does help to, when the horse uses the steps with the inside hind leg, underneath their body it helps to push their back up so that's the whole goal of trying to is of using the whip and then squeezing and releasing with the lunge line so here she's starting to get a bit of a deeper stretch starting to open up her stride but she still when she brings her head up her hind end kind of locks up and she shortens the stride and then when she stretches further down she relaxes more, her stride slows like there. She takes a deeper stretch, but she doesn't necessarily cover less ground. And that's important, that, they, that her stride doesn't necessarily shorten, it just slows and she gets more impulsion. And she's using her hind end to push that, ener that forward energy up into her back. So that's a big change from before to now she's able to hold the stretch and she's a lot more relaxed. She has floppy ears here. Not here, but. <laughs> and as you can see, when she comes around, she almost kind of swings her hind end outwards. She hasn't really obtained a full bend on the circle, as you can see if she went right there. She almost doesn't necessarily step deeply underneath her body. She almost seems to kind of swing her hind end out and away because she hasn't yet achieved as much bend as I would necessarily like, but when she stretches down, she's able to hold the bend a little bit better. And as you can see, when she comes up like this and hollows out, she loses that impulsion, her, the the steps with her hind end become a little bit short and then when she stretches down they slow the hawk starts to move in a more circular even motion kind of like a bicycle and it doesn't and it's not near as choppy or short and it doesn't almost like short circuit as it would if she goes around hollow and I'm just waiting for her to really settle into a very nice deep stretch where she holds it um, because she's she's a lot more easy to ride when she gets to that zone where she holds the stretch and maintains the stretch and doesn't come up like you see there as frequently so I just I spend a lot more time lunging than I do riding because it it benefits her particularly really well because she did come from a place of a very kind of weak back. Um, so the lunging is very, very beneficial for her. And there she starts to get a much nicer, deeper stretch, really starting to bounce off the ground. Her abdominal muscles start to engage. Here she rushes a little bit. And then she had held it long enough that I asked her to stop and I changed directions. 
She had learned to um, stop quite quickly, so that turning in, I'm trying to work on getting her to slowly come back down to the walk now and, and halt instead of just kind of sliding to a stop on the circle there. And I gave her a sugar as a reward. And even just after she got the stretch in the trot to the left, the difference in her relaxation just coming back down to the walk and switching directions, she has a much more relaxed kind of demeanor after getting into the zone and relaxing. Um, and she goes into a much deeper stretch now in the walk than she did when she first started. You can see how deeply she stretches underneath herself. Her, her stretch is almost to the ground in some cases. You can see when she came around just slightly that her abdominal muscles were tightened a little bit. And I didn't ask her to trot here, so when she trotted I just asked her back down to the walk. She likes to anticipate sometimes what I'm going to ask of her. And so she goes up into the trot, but I just wanted her to walk. I wanted her to take kind of a breather and to establish that nice deep swinging walk as she's starting to get here. And she's step, stepping underneath herself quite well. Still coming up and down. I'd like her to stay down a little bit more, but what I'm doing when she comes up is I just send her on slightly with the with the whip and squeeze again with the lunge line, just because that's kind of her cue, um, that the asking of the lateral movement on the circle is her cue to kind of stretch down and, and it pushes her into the stretch. But then I asked her back up into the trot, and it just takes her a second just to kind of settle into it. Um, but there she kind of goes. It's a lot quicker this direction after she has after she has gotten into the zone the other direction. It's a lot quicker for her to get into it the other direction. But as you can see, the difference into just transitioning into the trot is much more is much different and much less nervous from the other direction after she calms down and relaxes and and finds the zone. She has a completely different demeanor after she learns that it's not going to be a very stressful situation, which is very important for a horse of her nature. So I'm still using the whip and a little bit of the lunge line to ask for the lateral movement on the circle, or the shoulder in on the circle, so to speak, to get her to use push that inside hind leg kind of underneath her body to push up over her back. And when she's in there, she goes down a little bit. And then when she's hollow, you can see her hocks just kind of, they almost get stuck when her foot lands on the ground. And then when she stretches down, they almost seem to move in a more circular pattern, which is what we're looking for. And it's, and it's hard to see when they're first starting because they haven't developed the muscle to really be able to push off the ground. But as they start to progress, you can start to see the longer strides that the horse can take and the slower strides that the horse can take and the, um, the smoother, more floaty movement that the horse will then gain. And she's really starting to get a deeper stretch here now. There, that's what I want. When she goes all the way down and completely opens up the spine, because how you have to think about it is when the horse goes down, like if you watch them when they're grazing versus when their head is up, when their head goes down, the spine is, is lengthened and the spinous processes are sort of opened up. And when the horse stretches all the way down and completely opens up the spinous processes and they then start to push with the hind end and start to develop that muscle, they then can be able to start to support the rider. But when, if you try to go around with a horse that's hollow, with the spinous processes closer together, or in some 
worst case is rubbing, it causes excruciating pain and the horse's whole back will tighten up. Um, they start pulling along with the underside of the neck and they lose that impulsion that we seek from the hind and, and, and all the concussion starts to be taken up by the joints in the legs which causes um, them to deteriorate and we don't we can't work with our horses as long as we'd like to so I'm trying to push her out just a little bit more she um, tries to cut in a little bit a little bit here so that's why I have a little bit of a loose lunge line in there she starts to move out starts to get a little bit more bend but and she still rushes a little bit but here she starts to really get a little bit more swing starts to really stretch down more and that's what we want right about there and when her head comes up I just again slowly ask slightly ask her to move a little bit more forward and out and squeeze with the inside rein in there how she you can see how she's really starting to get into the zone now even how much her head comes up kind of decrease decreases she maintains the stretch her stride is not as um as slow or as powerful I guess you could say as it will eventually get but she came, like I said, she came from a place where she had very little muscle and a very nervous nature. So just in a change in a couple of months for, for her stride to change from how it was in the previous video to now is, is quite great to see. There she starts to get more impulsion. I just pushed her forward just a little bit. But then if I, I notice if I start to push her just a little bit too much, she starts to run and then when she gets too far on the forehand and feel and is thrown off balance, she'll bring her head back up. So it's very important not to push them too hard and there she slides to her stop again. And I asked her to walk on just a little bit after that, but the, um, but the videotape stopped. And so here I had gotten on, um, just kind of asking her into the stretch and she's doing she did very well today and just in in comparing videos from um, previous rides to now she doesn't have as great of a dip behind the saddle as she used to get and that's a very nice walk there she has a lot of swing in her in her back and in her hind end can step quite deeply underneath herself it's a nice deep stride. She's walking a little bit quick and a little bit choppy right now, but it, it, it smoothens out um, a little bit later in the video. And I really, again, seek that, that really deep stretch because that's when I feel that her back comes up the most and she relaxes the most and I can feel the, mo the biggest wave from her and um, it helps her gain the most muscle but when she first started you can't I couldn't expect that that very deep stretch because she really couldn't hold that deep of a stretch when she didn't have the muscle to so now that she's developed a little bit more muscle that's the kind of stretch that I'm seeking is that really deep um, stretch and I didn't trot her in this video because she like on the lunge line is 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 more nervous in the trot and um, especially so under saddle so it is um, it was important for me to establish a very very good walk before and and strength in the walk before I do trot her so that she doesn't go around as hollow or as quick or as nervous in the trot and when she comes up I just pick up the contact a little bit more, um, squeeze with my inside leg and um, to get her to yield her hindquarters and then squeeze with the inside rein um, which is the same thing as we're trying to do on the lunge line when we the whip is our basically our inside leg 
and the lunge line is our inside rein and so I use the whip and then I squeeze and release with the lunge line to ask her to stretch down and I can kind of mimic that under saddle and in the work in hand um, to create like a constant cue for her so that she has um, a very clear idea of what I want and there she starts to get a very nice deep stretch it's a lot slower she takes a very nice deep step starting to get a little bit more bent she will bulge her shoulder on occasion and what I do is I just make sure that I'm keeping enough contact with the outside rein and just kind of sending her forward when she starts to do that so that she doesn't run out um, with that shoulder and it's just a weakness and um, that she has and as she gets stronger she won't bulge out with the shoulder as much and here I was working on a leg yield um, She's starting to get it. I've just recently started working on leg yields with her um, because she does a lot better on the circles and when she would go around hollow the circles were the only way that I would be able to get her into the stretch and to get her relaxed and that was kind of the goal at the point was to just get her relaxed and so I haven't worked very much on lateral movements until now. Um, until recently but there she starts to get a very powerful forward walk where she was over her back and as you can see her ears are kind of floppy she's quite focused in her work she's not looking around everywhere I mean her head does come up and she hollows out but again that's just um, a strength thing she can't hold her head down her head she can't hold the stretch as long as I'd like her to but there she starts to get a deeper stretch and especially um, with the lateral movements she gets a little bit confused and she'll bring her head up um, there she starts to step a little bit more underneath herself in the lateral movement and then she goes down but and then when her head just comes up I just shorten the reins a little bit um, take a little bit more contact and, and ask her back onto a circle like I did here and she fell and she goes right back into the stretch but the lateral movement did kind of help her to get a, a bit of a deeper stretch because um, she learned to kind of move off of my leg and that definitely helps with the circle because I can um, use that to create more bend on the circle like here now she's starting to maintain the stretch a little bit longer her head doesn't come up as much and then I just go went ahead and switch directions and the left is a bit of her heart is her harder side um, she like on the lunge line she doesn't yield her hindquarters as well and that's just strength that we're trying to work on and I tried and I attempted a leg yield here moving her over into that outside rein contact and she started to get it a little bit better but she also gets a little bit nervous when she's learning something new and she starts to take quicker s steps and um, almost doesn't relax as well so that I, when she starts to get a little bit anxious I just put her back on a circle where it's kind of her comfort zone and she can relax a little bit better so she's a little bit tense here we um, and so I'm just trying to get her back into the stretch into a relaxed position Her stride starts to open up now. It's not as quick or as choppy as it was in the lateral movement. And there 
there she goes. She starts to relax a little bit more. Her stride slows down and deepens really good right there. Her back really starts to flow and move. The muscles in her back start to start to relax so she can step deeper underneath her body and her abdominal muscles can engage and support me. And if you can see, her neck has greatly changed too from the beginning video to now. She has a little bit more muscle up by the withers and there's not as much under, under neck muscle from kind of pulling her shoulders along. And that's a very nice stretch that she was getting there. And her head didn't come up as much as it did as it was. She's seeking the contact a little bit better. And when her head comes up again, I just ask her to move with, away with my inside leg and she goes all the way back down. That's a very nice stretch there. Starting to relax a little bit more. She's quite a sensitive horse, so um, especially with contact. So in the beginning she would try, kind of try to evade the contact and this is very good for her for kind of seeking it and not curling behind the bit and trying to evade the contact. Again, this is a bit of a harder direction for me and her of just asking her to kind of move away from my inside leg and to step underneath herself laterally. But then when she stretches, I find it much more easy when she has, when her back is up and she can move her spine, I can ask for bend and she seems to be able to respond a lot easier when she has that freedom in her back to do so. And there her stretch gets very deep and very consistent. And in the end that's just what we're looking for is that they can maintain and hold that stretch and she and for the trot, I would like her to be able to maintain it just a little bit longer for and a little bit more before I would do trot work with her. Um, just because of her nervous nature, um, with other horses, this would be, I would consider this okay to be able to go into trot work. Um, but because she is so nervous um, when she goes up into the trot, she will just kind of race around with her head up in the air um, and it would take her longer to relax if I didn't establish as relaxed of a walk um, as this as she starts to get here. And we just continue to ask for the deeper stretch using the inside leg in the squeezing and releasing with the inside rein while maintaining contact with the outside rein so that she doesn't overbend her neck. Because when she overbends her neck, what she would what she tends to do is she it tends to push through with the outside shoulder. Um, and she doesn't necessarily get into the into the stretch. She, she kind of locks up her back when she overbends and can't stretch all the way down and free up her back when she overbends like that. So it's very important to maintain that outside rein contact and move her with the inside leg into that outside rein contact. And there we start to get a very nice deep stretch. She starts to swing through a little bit more nose almost to the ground and that's really what I'm looking for is that she can maintain a walk like that for for a long period of time without losing it and that looks really good right there She's really starting to relax here now. Her ears are kind of floppy. She's not coming up near as much or as frequently as she was in the beginning of the workout. She can maintain it. She's seeking the contact more. Her stride has opened up even more. 
And like I said, we just remain on the circle because that's kind of her comfort zone. Um, and I have been working on a lot more lateral movements um, recently with her. But as you can see here, when I kind of go off, she gets a little bit confused, um, has a hard, almost has a hard time going straight because she doesn't have the, the strength yet to do so. And so um, the lateral movement has been kind of a work in progress with her. And here we attempt a leg yield. She starts to get it just a little bit. Not as deep as I'd like it, but starting to get there. And then she feels a little bit pressured, and so you can see how her stride kind of quickens. She almost kind of falls apart. Um, and then so we just go back onto, I think we go back onto the circle. No, I think we do another leg yield. And she maintained the stretch a lot better here after kind of doing it once or twice of, um, after letting her kind of figure it out. And the, the lateral work is not as good as it, um, as it, as good as it will be, but she's getting a lot better at it. But when she just comes up, I just pick up the outside rein contact or both con both reins. Um, and then use the inside leg to continue to ask her to step underneath herself and there she really starts to get an, a, a nicer leg yield. <coughs> and that definitely helps her um, relax when she steps underneath herself and kind of opens up her back and then she gets a really deep stretch here after after that leg yield and going back onto the circle. She's able to maintain it really, really nicely. She's stepping still a little bit quick, but, um, or not quick, but a little bit choppy and not as, re as relaxed as I think she'll get. But she's, she's doing quite good for right now, and then I, I try another leg yield again. She gets a little bit distracted there, but I, I just remain calm and just, and use my inside leg to move her into that outside rein to ask her back down into the stretch. And this leg yield seemed to do a little bit better. Still a little bit confused, not quite sure what I'm asking. Um, I hadn't done the leg yield very much before this, so this was, um, probably the, um, maybe the tenth time that I'd probably done a leg yield in a, in a ride with her. Um, like I said, her circle is her comfort zone, so we've been mainly teaching her, um, about the stretch on the circle so that she doesn't get too nervous and lose that relaxation that I'm trying to get with her. And her stride seemed to continually open up throughout this ride. And there it starts to slow a little bit. She really starts to step quite deeply underneath herself. Starts to get a little bit more push up, up through her top line, up through her back. And whenever she get, she I felt that she got a little bit nervous and her back kind of dropped out, that's when I put her back on the circle so that she could find that that kind of relaxed, stretchy place again um, before I asked her back out onto a leg yield. Just so that I didn't make her too feel too pressured or put her into a nervous situation. See, she's, you can see how she kind of crosses her legs over. She's a little bit confused, um, but then she starts to settle into it there, right there. She starts to move over a little bit more. Not in the stretch yet, but she really started to kind of get the hang of it and started to step underneath with that inside hind leg a little bit more. And then I believe we went back onto the circle here.
And we're getting close to the end of the ride. Um, like I said, I didn't trot her just because I wanted her to get into a really nice, calm, stretchy walk. Like that is very, very nice. Really starting to get a deeper, a deeper stretch and a, a deeper step underneath herself. Still not um, as much over the back as she will get, um, but that will come with more muscle development in time. She'll be able to um, hold that stretch and to remain over her back, but um, the muscle that she gained um, just by holding the stretch more was was quite incredible to see. And I just switched directions towards the end here. She kind of lost her focus a little bit, but then she quickly found it again. Starts to open up her stride a little bit more here. Maintains a good deep stretch. That's what I'm looking for. She starts to bend a little bit better here. Step under, starting to step underneath herself with her inside hind leg. And there you can kind of see how she how she kind of bulged out with her um, outside shoulder. And I, I just asked her to go forward. Picked up a little bit more inside outside rein contact. Um, <clears throat> and just sent her on. She's maintaining quite a good stretch here and gets very nice and deep right there and really starts to hold it. I was very happy that she started to hold it a little bit more towards the end of the ride. You can see her abdominal muscles are, are engaged. Really starting to find and seek the contact. And there she really starts to settle into it. She doesn't bulge her shoulder out as much coming around here when she's stretched down and over her back. And there I was very happy with that, so I let her be done. 